Hey guys, it's Adam from Dispixel and welcome back. This week, I've been very deep in thought and very deep in feeling because a few events happened this week that aligned perfectly in my mind. You could see that the stars aligned and it just happens to be ironic that one of those reasons is because of the perfect, flawless, total solar eclipse that we witnessed this week, that many of us got a chance to witness. I very thankfully happened to live in the path of totality in Montreal, Canada. And although I only got a very brief three to 10 seconds glimpse of it, it's something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life, as many of you who might have experienced it as well, might feel as well. The fact that I could see a planet overlap a star so close with my naked eye was a very fascinating thought that we could see this object in space pass in front of the sun is surreal in and of itself. When the moon that was 400 times smaller than the sun passed in front of the sun perfectly. That's exactly 400 times further away than the moon. An experience that our grandchildren and our great grandchildren might never get to experience the way we did. And for that brief moment of totality, for those fleeting seconds of totality, I took the glasses off and for the first time in my life, got to see a glimpse of the sun in its purest form. Not this yellowish ball of overwhelmingly glowing light glaring in my face that I have to wear a pair of sunglasses to avoid. No. A purely, flawlessly silver white ring of light against the most beautiful, deep, gray, teal, dark sky with a little tiny little perfect glint of fiery pink light shooting out the side, a prominence shooting out the side of this, this marvelous sight. And I didn't expect it to impact me as emotionally as it did. So much so that I ended up writing about it in my journal the following morning. And when I reflected on that experience, that fleeting three seconds that I risked glancing at it with my naked eye, I tried to describe how I felt looking at it. And then I realized how I felt about it. I felt in awe. I felt amazed. But most importantly, I felt sad. Reflecting on what I saw for only a very, very, very brief moment for the only time in my life that I ever will ever be able to experience a total solar eclipse in its most flawless form that we won't be able to see due to the distance and the alignment and everything, everything, every gravitational pull in the universe, all having to work perfectly to align everything that way at these perfect distances. I only experienced it once in my life and it took me 15, 50 years almost to reach that point and I will never experience it again. And it wasn't that it was just beautiful. It was that I was reminded through my artist's mind that the universe itself is so spectacularly beautiful that I'm not even permitted to look at it. <laughs> it's the closest thing to a religious experience I, I could say I've ever had in my life that 
that the universe itself is so overwhelmingly spectacular and powerful and complex that my meager, frail human eyes aren't even capable of gazing upon it. And that the universe gave us that day on June 8th, 2024, a couple of fleeting seconds to gaze at the at a fleck of that universe and it was by far the most visually spectacular thing i have ever seen i was permitted a glimpse at a universe that i will never have permission to visit and as an artist someone who lives in a world lives in a mind that is always aiming himself in the direction of capturing the grandeur and beauty of this world and this universe and the people and the creatures that inhabit it it is overwhelmingly humbling to know that i'm never even going to be able to partially appreciate the grandeur that is this universe that I was a creation of. To me, my creator is that pure silver ball of light in the sky. And I looked at her for just a fleeting moment. And if I risked looking at her even one moment later, I could be blinded for the rest of my life. That's a fantastic but very saddening thought, isn't it? (laughs) Because our sun is only one of trillions and trillions of stars of many different varying sizes and shapes throughout this vast universe that I will never be able to leave my own atmosphere to visit. That fucking sucks doesn't it? And if there's any reason for me to dream of an afterlife, it's that I could leave this body and visit this universe and look at it without the risk of damaging myself. I wish, I wish for that experience because that little fleeting moment that I had was only a glimpse of just how spectacular this universe can be. But I think it would be cruel for me or any of us, especially as artists, to have this experience without being able to fully comprehend and appreciate and capture it. Because as an artist, that's our goal. It's to capture the beauty of our experience in the best way we can. And we spend our entire lives trying to capture it through our talent through our dedication through our time through what very few years we have on this planet and that's what that moment left me with it was this feeling of utter humility and then later on during that week i was watching a video by another artist of sorts that expressed a very similar feeling in a much more human and much more approachable way because i was watching some ufc some ultimate fighting championship which is something i've never been into watching fighting growing up but for some reason recently i've been very interested in it i was watching videos by conor mcgregor and by dj bj penn and then i watched i started watching some some videos and some fights and some interviews with my local superstar ultimate fighting champion gsp jean saint pierre who's from here in montreal quebec this is a person who's like us dedicated his life to the mastery of his craft to the mastery of his art the art of fighting 
And I really do honestly feel it is, in many, many ways, an art. It's a dance, it's a study, it's a celebration of huma humanity in its rawest form, if you think about it. It's one of those it's one of those skills, much like drawing and painting and music and acting, that you have to come to terms with your own humanity in order to master it. It's how we as people try to harness our own power, our own abilities as people, to be able to communicate that passion to others. And in order for us to be able to be masters of our own craft, much like a fighter, we have to understand the people who, which we interact with, either by dazzling them with our talent and our form of communication, or by conquering them as a fighter. It's a physical activity. It's an emotional activity. And in one of his interviews, he said something that aligned perfectly with what I experienced, what a lot of us must have experienced when it came to witnessing this eclipse and being humbled by its beauty. He described, after he'd already become world champion and arguably one of the greatest fighters of all time, a habit, a practice that he would do deliberately. Because when you're on this mountain, when you're on this, this summit as one of the highest achieve, achievers in their craft, it's very easy to lose sense of your humanity on earth. And he said, one of the things I love to do is just sit there at a park or in a parked car anywhere and just watch normal people, as he said with a smirk on his face, because he was being a bit sarcastic, right? Normal people. He would watch an old woman walking to her car. She would, he would watch another guy packing his groceries with his kids. He would watch somebody, some, some other person walking up a flight of stairs, looking at their phone. He would just watch people doing normal everyday things. And he would think to them, hit to himself, Nobody gives a shit about what you do, George. Nobody gives a shit about this strain, this worry, this, this pressure you put on yourself to win, to be the world champion, to hold on to your, to your belt, hold on to your championship status. Nobody cares. That old woman doesn't know who you are. That guy putting his groceries into his car might not give a shit, might not be looking forward to your next fight. He might have much more important things to him to worry about. And he said, just remembering that his life, remembering that his goals, his aspirations, his desires, his motivations are specks of dust in the vastness of this universe and that his life is so incredibly insignificant in and of itself that it grounds him as a person it grounds him as a living creature and puts life into perspective exactly the way that Eclipse, that glimpse into the vastness of the universe that we all had this week on June 8th, 2024, at 3.26 p.m. Eastern Time in Montreal, reminded us that our lives and our desires are fleeting and meaningless in and of themselves. Did it make me feel like giving up? Did it make me feel like, what's the fucking point in any of this? Why bother with my little, <laughs> with my little life goal? No, it didn't. Looking at that eclipse did not make me feel like giving up and it didn't destroy my feeling of self-worth. And this life's pursuit of art and the threats to it like artificial intelligence and plagiarism and theft and all that crap 
has done absolutely not one fraction of a thing to stop me from continuing forward at full steam with full motivation. I have not experienced a single student of mine or a single artistic friend of mine in any different type of art that for a moment, despite all of these, these demonstrations of our own futility, have done anything to stop. They're still going full steam. They motivate themselves more and more every single day and push themselves more and more every single day to become better versions of who they are. Why? What's the fucking point of me doing another drawing? How is me not drawing for the next half of my life going to have any impact on the universe as a whole? It won't. It's meaningless. It's pointless. Why do I keep doing it? Well, that's the thing. It's the fact that this isn't about me. I'm not here for myself. There is nothing that I've ever done for myself that has ever had any true meaning to itself. Everything that I do for myself is for everyone else. Everything that I do for myself is to make myself a longer lasting, smarter, stronger, more capable, wiser, more humble, more empathetic vessel for everybody else's experiences. I don't create art to satisfy myself because I can look at my own drawing and the only thing that I, the only satisfaction I get from my drawing is a fleeting three second glimpse at the beauty of the universe and then it's over <laughs> and then it's gone. I don't experience, if I continued to stare endlessly, if that moment of totality of that eclipse just froze in time and I could just keep staring at it and staring at it and staring at it and staring at it, eventually I would start taking it for granted. Actually very quickly I would probably start taking it for granted. How do I know? Well, because that star has been outside your window since you were born. How often do you think about it? You don't. But for that moment, it made us reflect on our lives. It made us reflect on our existence. What the universe gave us for that brief three seconds was a moment of appreciation for our existence. A moment of appreciation for the fact that every single person on this planet that was it within that path of totality, a huge shadow that spanned across the majority of the face of the planet and streaked across it for that brief moment, unified every single one of us. We were all in awe. There were no borders. There were no political divides. There were no prejudices. There was no religious divides. We were just flecks of dust scattered across the face of this surface, this ball, all staring up at our creation in a moment of unified awe and appreciation. And the fact that it lasted for three seconds is all nature needs to do. All she needs to do is just open the door for a brief moment and let you get a glimpse. And you'll remember it for the rest of your life, won't you? My art isn't there to make me feel happy or for you to stare at it. It's to give you a brief glimpse into the beauty of the inside of my mind to the best of my ability for a brief moment and give you a feeling of unified appreciation with me. If you just so happened to, to appreciate the same universe that I have. And in my opinion, 
What pure form of humanity is there than artistic expression? Because all I can do is just share what I have with you. All the universe had for that three seconds was, or for three minutes, depending on how lucky, how luckily placed you were on this planet, that all you needed was that brief moment. You don't need to stare at something endlessly to appreciate it. And for that brief moment that Jacques St. Pierre is on that stage and he's punching somebody in the face or trying to hold him down to the mat and figure out his opponent, he's having a human exchange with another person who has a mutual passion that they're trying to get inside each other's minds. They're trying to understand each other and appreciate the complexity of that other human being in their rawest, most vulnerable form for about five minutes at best, <laughs> or 25 minutes at least, if they're lucky, if they can last that long, and then it's over. But in that brief moment, they have earned a respect for the talent and the dedication and the passion that another human being has. They are fully appreciating that other human being. It's a dance with another human being. It's a connection with another human being. It's an art that they're sharing with another human being that everybody in that audience and everybody watching can appreciate. And this is why in most cases when fighters have finished that fight and their eyes are all swollen and their faces are all busted up and they're bleeding out of their nose and they're all shaken up and exhausted and sweating and you know their skin's raw they embrace they've had this they've had this intimate exchange between each other fighting is an intimate experience with another human being not a romantic one necessarily but definitely an intimate one and that's what art is. I'm giving you a glimpse inside my mind. And as I share these thoughts with you, these art talks, these art talks are an extension of my art to you as your art is an extension of your minds and thoughts to me that I can briefly appreciate. And this is the reason why I will never take my talent or my desire to create and share with you for granted because what pure form of connection do we have with each other and with the universe than that brief three-second glimpse into the grandeur of our minds. And with that said, I love you all with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.